Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Team secrets turn Dire to ban. Team ban. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready. Our draft has just begun, so we're going to drop you right in for game number one's draft. Remember, this is the upper bracket semi-final. Winner goes to the upper bracket final, guarantees themselves a top three spot. Vici Gaming versus Team Secret. Our panel members are ready for the draft as well. Jack, what are you expecting? Ten seconds um, remaining. Some combination of Razor, Tiny, and Medusa. Five seconds remaining. So that's my initial draft expectation. Uh, I can step already confused. Like, wait, what? You mean one team or? Well, not not all in one team. Picked across the board. Uh, picked across the board. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. okay, okay. okay. So, first three picks. What? That I would mean, be weird. Yeah, I can see it. Probably a lot of focus on the support bands again. Can be really popular this tournament. Port heroes. We've also seen double core openers, which I can't remember Dark the last time I saw. Band. Very long time ago. Yeah. It feels like the supports are really, really crucial right now. Like the way they play and move around the map. So what do we have? And there we are. Three supports, five supports. Yep. Are we going to get a six? Yep. It's, it's no call is worth banning. I was wondering if they would let the Ten bounty hunter secret through. Secret has been pretty comfortable oh. first picking that just about every time. I actually thought Secret might want to ban out the Slaughter because if they don't, I think Vigi will just push to pick it again. Why not? Just it seems to be to working to for them, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's um, let's see, a couple other staples that we've come to see this patch in the pool. There's an ogre still available. Ogre is very strong, yeah. That's on the also end, in there. Well, the secret pick ogre, they also were one of the only teams that actually remaining. first picked a tiny and still had a lot of success with it. Pick. Also, the, the undying is seen by some as, as kind of an answer, um, or at least an early like, support answer to the ogre. And so I'm yeah. wondering with that ban, if that's be, something be, that they Because want. undying is the only hero that can actually fight in 1v1. All the other heroes just get clubbed. Some other very popular heroes right now in this pool. I think the Rubik pick here you know, likely discourages an Omni Knight pickup. Although something that Vici wanted to take in their yeah, first yeah, phase. Yeah, it's, it's quite good against Slaughter too if they want to do that. Remaining. It opens the Omni Knight for themselves as well. And yeah. then Vici now have to consider, you know, they take her ban. Yeah. I know how much um, Lacoste loves this hero. Um, but both these teams have picked Bane, Bane a lot. I personally think Bane is a lot uh, stronger than things. I actually think it's one of the strongest heroes in Dota. Really? Especially it's been on, on the way, though. Dropping down the chat. I, I understand why he's so averse to the bane. Ah, there, there, right it. there. It's uh, because because to him, like the hero, you know, it doesn't do too much and seem to do too much in team fights. It's like to him, it's like it's useful in the first five to ten minutes of the game, and but then that, it just really falls off from there. But that's less the case now than it was before. Yeah, but that's oftentimes also like all you need. I say yeah. you pick yeah. like a greedy mid here, like Invoker, uh, Bane, say, Bane will secure him, it's for sure. It's exactly. Five it's basically remaining. the perfect five, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really strong five, yeah. and if you are lucky enough later on in the, in the game that you can fiend script someone for the whole five seconds, you can win a team for your team. As I said, early on, he's really tanky, he can mm. deal a lot of pure damage, a lot of burst damage <laughs> early on. He trades you, well. You mentioned yeah. uh, Lanham's wrist ball. One of those in that ball includes the Elder Titan. Mm. Yeah. And uh, instead of picking the Rubik to stop the Omni, with him. pick it with yeah, him. Took it, took it Have themselves. two Omnis. <laughs> took it themselves. Yeah, to, to, to kinda, well, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if you could steal your own spells from your own people? Well, you can. You pick a Morphling. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we saw that happen earlier yeah. as well. That but, was pretty cool. But yeah, the Elder Titan Bane, they have a lot of disables Ten across the board, remaining. a lot of save for their cores, a lot of lane dominance as well. And Five Omni is just a staple Dire hero. He back. offers a lot, a very strong off lane. And you can't really pick too many greedy carry heroes if you're a VG here because Omni punishes those very severely. Yeah, and then with, with the Razor ban, they ban one of their own uh, potential Turn answers to it as well. And then as you mentioned, like, just the bodies on these two VG supports in lane, right? They hit extremely hard. You do not really want to trade with these yeah. heroes. They hit extremely hard and they have extremely high HP as well. 700 each, I think. The Bane even, even more, obviously, with, uh, with the sap, sap, yeah. sap as well. You never want to trade against the Bane. It's just Ten worth feeding into it. Yeah, the, the, like, in the past when Bane was picked, not just for like lane bullying, but like there's often some kind of setup. But that's just like the bonus for picking the hero. Like If you end up going with a Mirana, if you end up going with a Kunkka as a Roman, it just, it just seems like a bonus at this yeah. point. Like, it's just a bonus, yeah. He just wants to dominate the lane. Team Luna Bane is a bit curious. High attack damage, good attack animation. Panda. 
don't, right we now. Don't, we don't see a huge amount of. Yeah, so Broom, Broom is really strong against the uh, Omni Knight because yeah. it can dispel the Guardian Angel. So Which... this, is, this is seen as another, like uh, as you said, like another kind of Ten answer to the Omni Knight, right? So when Lane is particularly annoying, um, the Drunken Haze, he gives you laning Five options because you often don't have to protect him. You can leave him in any one-on-one -on -one matchup. And like you said, the dispel also uh, good for that. Also discourages certain other picks like a CK. Uh, things like that. If you pick, if you're a little bit light on AOE, say from support position, you, just spell you can them. make up for it with the spell. Yeah. yeah, it actually did like 3k damage to those illusions, crazy amount. And also Omni Knight, of course, you can just primal split and um, heal him up into the air for like eight seconds and then do it again. And that's the only weakness of Omni Knight. If he can't heal you, then he can't heal you. And the fight's you. over by the time he's able to contribute anything. Yeah, exactly. And that's the biggest weakness Omni Knight has. And Panda takes advantage of that perfectly. And they have Elder Titan as well, who can disable him from behind. They have a sleep as well. They have a lot of tools to deal with the Omni Knight. So they have a lot of things to steal. So they go for the Ogre third pick. Ogre Omni dual lane is... Are you not worried about that too much? I mean, I, I think steal. both Bane and, and Titan, they can kind of fight the Ogre, right? Like head to head. Ten seconds remaining. Be able to. Yeah, they can trade. They can trade decently with. I'm a bit worried if they dual lane the ogre on the off lane. There's not a lot of carries they can pick because they were just punished. It's very hard to dual lane against this. They probably need to try lane safe lane if they want to pick a hard carry for Paparazzi like they have been opting to in the in the last two games. Unless they do go for another lane answer, um, something like potentially an Ursa. Um, it, again, like you don't really, yeah. you know, that kind of turns the tide on the lanes. Yeah. Um, gives them more activity early on too. This that could present issues if they pick it up. If they choose to go for a harder carry, they probably want to dodge the lanes again, like they did in the last game against Bineski. And then just roam with the two supports that make a lot of space for him. They need a lot of damage right now. They have a lot of tank abilities, a lot of disables, a lot of like heal and sustain, but they lack severely in the damage department. So Tiny's not off the board yet. I think that's definitely a possibility. It's got to be considered. There's still a Medusa there. Yeah. Um, something that, again, like a lot of teams Team value more than others. We've seen Secret pick it up quite a bit as well. Terrorblade. Well, this... You don't want to pick a Tiny into this one. B completely destroys Tiny. I really like the VG lineup again. They have a lot of team fight, and what they really missed was uh, here they can pressure towers and shove in the lanes, and TB Ten takes care of both of that. Remaining. Now... Secret will have a pretty rough time to pick Five a card that's good remaining. against both TB and Elder Titan because Titan is very strong against most carry heroes into the game. But what have they been running? They have been running the, the Tiny a lot. I said this is like not really a good choice here. They've been running other carries. They've been running the Medusa. But Medusa against TB is also kind of mad. Seems like it might be, it might be a Medusa situation. Um... I haven't seen... I think OD is another possibility. OD is quite strong, um, especially with the Repel and Bloodlust. They take care of the problems he has. Yeah, if, when they have these type of, like, raid boss... But they do go like, for the go tiny, for tiny anyway. When they have these kind of, like, raid boss setups with, like, the double buff or double heal, yeah. like, you're going to want someone like that who does, like, gigantic amounts of but, damage. But they have a lot of good answers against that raid boss. They have Bane as well as Terrorblade. If you Thunder that guy, he still is going to die immediately. You can pin script him. Seconds remaining. They have a lot of ways to deal with the, with the Tiny. But then again, if you're repelled and you get fiend script, you don't really, really care. Because you got the status resistance, it's going to end after like two seconds. The only thing you're really afraid of is the thunder this game. And the high physical damage output of the Terror Blade. I agree with you on the value of the Terror Blade pick, though. Because if you talk about self-sufficient carries, again, with the rotation, he has great kill potential. Um, you can take your tower. You kind of need like a mix of like gap close and wave Ten clear, or like and AoE when you're dealing against them sometimes. And so... Yeah. It feels like that's a bit of a deficiency Five for Secret, remaining. with the exception of Tiny. Like, they really didn't have much of that to speak of at all. The lane push is going to be a huge problem for Secret, I think. TB can push in two lanes, and their heroes don't even push out lanes well, bar the Tiny. You can only push out one lane, it's not a Terror Blade. And then, obviously, Tiny takes care of the objective, so that's quite good for them. They need, like, a Space Maker now. Either that or a hard carry for. CTY because they've been running Ace on the solo mid tiny a lot, who then creates a lot of space for CTY to farm. CTY Puck 
I, I've never seen Ace play Puck. I'm pretty sure it's a CTY Puck. He is one of the best Puck players in China, or at least he was. I haven't seen him play that hero for a long time. So maybe there's, maybe there's you know more about there's that. There's the kind of space maker requirements you're talking about, and a hero yeah. that's pretty hard for them to kill or lock yeah. down. Like he should have a pretty free game for the most part. And it's pretty good against both Elder Titan and Main too. He can cancel the grip. He can stop the stomp from Elder Titan. Not bad against Terrorblade too. If you get somehow get into a Dagon Veil, you can burst him down as well. Brewmaster, of course, very afraid of silence. Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin. Heroes. I think Templar is actually the perfect pick here. It counters both Puck and Tiny. However, the laning phase might be a bit hard because Ogre in the lane is a hard counter to TA. So they need to secure the TA somehow. So I think so. so most likely they'll they'll probably try to uh, match up this this TA with the Puck. Um, and they'll probably make sure the Brewmaster is lined up against the Omni Knight. They can't. And then just yeah. however they move the other supports around to protect mid or to protect Terrorblade, wherever yeah. it's needed. That's going to be VG's game plan for this. I really think VG's draft is very good because they need to address both the TA and the TB. And they can't be at both lanes, right? So I'll give a little bit of a draft edge to this time, I think. I'm going to have to agree with that assessment. I think they remember. scale a little bit better, but you know, it's like, can the draft get away with more scaling? Yeah. They're very they greedy. Yeah. They're very greedy for sure. But if they can get away with it, the mid lake game will be amazing. If they can, then they will probably get run over fairly early. There, but there isn't really like a super pushing type of component, I feel, the secrets lineup. I don't, don't feel like they could really try to death ball early to punish, to punish that, unless Omni has, gets a great start. So I'm with VG for game one. Okay. All right. I think uh, we have a view here from the expert panel. They firmly believe that the top team so far here at the Perfect World Masters will continue in that vein as they head into the semi-final of the bracket. It's game on as far as Team Secret and Vici Gaming are concerned, which means handing you over to our commentary team for our final series of the night. Toby Wan and Melina, it's all yours. Feeling that hype coming from the panel as well as the, I say bias. As well as the crowd. The crowd! Yes, that's right. We have ourselves a bit of a smoke gank right here. Wait for him to come in later this weekend, however. But VG Gaming, fantastic we draft, well rounded. Melini, you seem to be a big fan of it as well at the very end. Oh, I like the draft a lot more. Uh, for a lot of reasons. I think the Brewmaster versus the Omni Knight is something that other teams have explored in this tournament and has worked out surprisingly well. Yeah, you just cyclone him, and then what is he going to do? <laughs> if you repel yourself, he just cyclones someone else. And you can dispel the GA, which is awesome. And then they have the good lane matchups. Omni Knight might be able to win his lane, but you have the Puck versus the TA, which is definitely TA favored. And you also have all these heavy, heavy physical damage dealers versus a Tiny. Like, Tiny it has some armor with Grow, but he's still going to get destroyed. I guess at least you don't get any value from Natural Order. Negative value. That's an upside. But as you said, like the grow, like uh, the armor change was in grow recently, so the movement speed's gone, but you get the 5, 10, 15 armor buff up that comes with that. So maybe that does make him a little bit more sustainable. I was also interested to see how uh, Team Secret would, would do the laning phase. Jack was mentioning it. Maybe you want to get that Omni Knight up against the Brewmaster. Right now, Team Secret actually have Fada sitting up on the top lane with uh, CTY being aggressive to try and steal out bounty runes. Everyone's going to end up trading out to a 2-2 two -two rune situation anyway, so... But this is going to make for a fun laning phase, to say the least. Yaps is already starting his rotation. Puppy's setting down sound. So it looks like Team Secret are going to go with standard lanes, and VG are doing exactly the same thing. So nothing out of the ordinary with the very, very start. And um, do we actually expect a very passive style of game? Like, you can look for Puppy and Yapsaw to do his rotation, do you get the same amount out of, like, Lanham, or is Lanham just, like, the same here? Trade with Puppy, do this dual lane mid that we're used to. You have to look at the core matches for that, and in the mid lane, we have Puck versus TA, which is the big, big uh, discrepancy, right? TA scales a lot better. Puck generally just, you know, he, he can get, he can snowball a lot more, whereas TA benefits way more from a passive style, where you just farm up Ancients and do Roche if the other team is doing something silly. So, I would say that Vici definitely have the late game, uh, I would say. Terraplane is also just like really hard to deal with in the late game, especially with her lineup that does not have significant of, amounts of AoE. Tree grab does not count. <laughs> we don't we want them to count, Puppy. He's just dropping really low here in mid. So much damage on line with a plus 54, it will be enough. I Puck actually... Be able to get a revenge, but... I man. did not think he was actually going to die from that hit. 
I, I like was it. actually very surprised. I was like, okay, it's going to take him like one and like a tenth more hit. It looked like he had like one ten percent HP of uh, one right click, but oh. maybe he rolled a little bit high. Maybe he's got a ton of damage from creeps. He had plus 52. He literally had double damage. And now Dude, he back hit this wood again. Back at it. <laughs> oh, man. Toss the phone book at it. And this is... This is a hero who, like, I was wondering too, like, when he got picked up, if it will all be about, like, the offlane of VEG, like, just giving that absolute power to ensure that Ace can't get himself a good start. But instead, he's focusing pretty heavily on just making CTY's life very problematic. But it's, it's really not that bad, is it? Though? Like, CTY is still 8 for 3, he gets the 10 for 1. CTY got a kill in return. It's not to make his life problematic, it's to make the TA's life easy. Because TA. TA versus Ogre is really bad. Like, you can take off all the reflection charges. Are they going to get a revenge? Gapsol in through yep. the side, pick him up, toss him back over again, and then it's just all about a good club, and Puppy gets his revenge. So, Lanham's doing something that's, you know, generally what you do in this sort of situation. You draw the attention away from the TA, and you put a lot of focus on yourself uh, so that TA can get to level 5, level 6. Once you're level 5, level 6, you're perfectly fine. You can do Ancient super easily, you have traps to help you out, and. Elder Titan can catch up easily. He's a support who cares if he dies early, as long as your TA gets a relatively easy time. And the CS is actually very close in the middle lane yep. for them. CS is actually close all around. Like, there's only Puck who's just slightly ahead of everybody else, but it is very even. This bottom lane, this really is the brawl. As Aceless tends to catch up his sleeve as well as the Avalanche, so he'll return a bit more damage. Has a tree up, needs more life. There's the Sick Titan kicking in. Doesn't have the Avalanche back again. Going under the tower. Young 11 Mango, so he can clap into the tree. The damage from the town will be quite high, but not high enough. Dude, they are just going at it. Like, they do not care about dying towers. They are... Uh, this is the VT I like to see. Aggressive, in control. I suppose, too, when VG Gaming look at Team Secret, top lane. Bit of a pickup. Fenrir, difficult to kill. You do have two points up in Purify, so Fire's trying to cut his way through a little bit faster. Not They're not going to get it. Bane is way too tanky. Yeah. But uh, when you think about the weakness of Team Secret, every, everyone knows, obviously, you're, you're missing out mid one. You've got CTY as that stand-in. And you... Okay, Fada. Oh, actually, he's in trouble. Space created by Yapsaw. Has to put the sleep onto himself. Fada goes for the tree line. Still has that purification. Taking the time to salve up to. Making it sure this metamorphosis of paparazzi is as wasted as much as they can. Yapsaw has the priority cancelled. Fade falls. He knows he's dead, but in comes Puppy. If they can get a revenge on a paparazzi, they'll make it worthwhile. But the stomp from Lanham. Everyone goes to sleep for the moment as paparazzi runs down south. Trying to escape from this gank, but he's salving up into the trees. They need to cancel this. More loose to choose from. Puppy so low. Purification's on the Fada. So he can set his ground. Do the damage into Paparazzi, but it doesn't work when Fenrir claims a double kill as that Bane picking up the supports of Team Secret's offlane. That was some great teamwork coming out from Vici and Paparazzi, sick Illusion Micro. There's only so many limited things that you can do as a Terrorblade early on in the game, and Illusion Micro is definitely one of the top things. That's what I like to see from the position ones. Scout out that vision, and that burned Rubik's clarity too. Like, he... You know, Yepsor has kind of been hailed as a position four, but he does demand a lot of farm. Even a lot of small things like that are going to ruin his game. Or have the potential to ruin his game, rather. Mm. Oh, that, that last point I was getting to before two team fights happened to interrupt me. It's just the fact that VG Gaming, if they, if they push up the tempo, it breaks the weakness and the synergy of Team Secret's lineup with the stand-in. Done! Maybe so. Maybe so. Weakens. I, I CTY, I, I, Puck is uh, Puck is actually one that you do need a lot of teamwork, so I can see it this game. Some of the heroes, it's like, you know, yeah, it, but, yeah, it's okay. a mid-player. Yeah, you can see Puppy's draft trying to get around that yeah. as, as often as he possibly goes. Like, what do I pick? Medusa and Razor, two heroes, very difficult to kill. Morphling, very difficult to kill heroes. I think it's less so the stand factor and more the chaotic factor that CTY brings, because he is a very, very difficult player to read. Movements, item builds, just the way he plays is unlike a lot of other players, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, Team Secret have to read him as much as they possibly can. But for now, the draft, the, the, uh, the farming game, six minutes in, pretty well balanced, only 1k the difference. It's just more battles for the like, Yapsaw's trying to steal the bounty rune. Fada's nearby, so he can help out here. Just looking for the Brain Sap. Level 2 on it. More support rotating over. Again, Lanham with the Spirit Stomp. It only catches Fada. The Spirit gives a little bit of extra vision for that, but Ori... 
Doesn't have the high movement speed as he's still short of his phase boots. So he cannot get up the hill in time. Bottom lane. Brewmaster Split is going out. Ace trying to survive into the trees. Dick Charges once again going to go off. The Brewmaster Split got another six seconds left on it. Six seconds will be more than enough, and maybe it won't be. Avalanche is up. Yep, so suddenly blocking Ace, and that'll allow the Rockstar to fly forward. He doesn't have another control here, yep, so Finally, Puppy will hit the deck. Dude, he's balling out of control. 11. Brewmaster, I remember seeing him on the safe lane. He performed pretty well, but this is far better early game than he has had. Yeah, his CS isn't great, but he's killed the Tiny. Twice, yep. without dying, and that is very, very impressive. He's almost got the same net worth as the TA. Top three net worths belong to VG Gaming at the moment. And he's also forcing the supports to move. They had a TP down to the bottom lane, and now top lane is just not particularly great for Fada. He knows that he's going to be alone for quite some time. I'm wondering if that's the reason, too, why he was just pressuring the top tower, at least put into the mind of Paparazzi that he can be aggressive, that he is a strong hero. He brought 10 tangos to lane, so I'm sure he's fine. Middle lane rotations coming in. There's Puppy and Lanham get to say hello to each other. Not much should come from this, as they're still fighting, I think, the tower. It's just the fact that CTY is just so low on life. Fada will end up dying to the top lane, so all that posturing doesn't do a lot. And well, I didn't say much will come from this mid lane, but Puppy is so low, and CTY the has no real answer to that kind of aggression. The momentum has just been crazy. Look at this. They have an ancient stack, too. Look at where... Oh, that's ridiculous. It seems like they've been everywhere on the map and they've been ancient stacking in the meantime. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not even it's not even just one, two. I think that's actually a quad ancient yeah. stack in there. So in the past like two minutes, they had this massive stack. They took out two oh, observer wards. Dead. They dewarded everywhere. They killed the tiny. They, they're about to kill the Omni maybe twice. It looks like he's gonna die twice here. Yep. Couple of extra attacks from Paparazzi. One more will do it. His metamorphosis Ooh. just wore off, however. Is he gonna go under the tower? No, he won't. He'll turn around. Yep, Souls arrived, and it would have punished Paparazzi pretty heavily D if he did dive it. This is one of the games where as a support for Secret, you're just you just feel like a firefighter. Like it, your whole entire side of the map and all your heroes are just dying and everyone's screaming for help, and you just <laughs> need to try and do what you can. But sadly, they just seem like they're a little bit too late. <laughs> Love that with, okay, H how, how do I actually fight Young Eleven? Throw him away. Don't deal with it. But Team Secret are oh, looking to are find they gonna a get three the stack? man smoke up. They're going to look for the opportunity, and what a good time to do it. Yapsaw, uh, he late. doesn't have the Observer Ward. They need to see up the hill. Maybe they can at least get the pick up on the TA. If they observe what the hillside, it will work. Lanham soaks up the smoke gank. And Ori... Well, he's got two big black dragons left to farm. That is all. That, yeah, and they got no one that could farm it there. The I secret. think they only got experience from like two or three of the ancients too. I think if they get the experience, it's still like decent. I mean, two dragons, it's it's all right, but I mean, you're two, still two, in a two dragons and a and a kill. Okay, they got one dragon so far. Lanham is coming back in again with his spirit, just trying to cause fighter problems. They did get that sentry ward oh, down. Dream coil, over on Ori. Hides, now he pops back out, actually hitting with the Mel Strike into CT. Why? He doesn't care. They're the initiators. He wants to go for more. One hit into Yapsor and he loses one third of his life. That wasn't even a refraction buffed up hit. Those uh, traps do surprising amounts of damage too. Especially since they got buffed. Yeah, 250. I, I don't think I've seen people take the talent, but 200 psionic trap talent might will be worth considering this game. The Fiend script over on Ace. He'll break free. Still has a lot of one shots up his sleeve. Strength tread more up, but what does he really do? He tosses. He's just trying to go for the kill on the Bane, realizing he's dead, but the Nightmare! What a situation! Ace will take it off him, tosses the tree, as we'll have a quick pause out by Puppy. But this is escalating quickly. Yeah, this In is, favor this, of VG. This has been a very hectic 10 minutes. I don't really think that they were expecting VG to push the pace like this. You know, normally you're like, okay, Terrorblade and TA. Terrorblade relies on metamorphosis. You had a good two and a half minutes in between tower sieges. TA, you expect some ancient stacking. Brewmaster, you, you know, he's going to get level six at some point, maybe 10 minutes into the game, but he has just been on fire. Brewmaster is, are you kidding me, level nine? <laughs> yep. He's almost, he's almost level 10, and he's 8 gold away from his blink. So things are looking bleak for VG, but Secret, keep in mind, they still do have the Omni Knight. Omni Knight is one of the best team fighters in the game right now, yeah. and because of their heavy reliance on physical damage, almost entirely from two of their cores, they're not going to be able to do anything in G during GA if Omni Knight can actually get his spells out. However, yeah. the one thing that is concerning is he's going for Hand of Midas. So... 
he it wants to play the farm game versus a team that he's going is happy Midas. to play the farm game. Bru just finished his hand of Midas, and there's an extra tome of knowledge flying out in the courier. This one's going to go to Lanham, of course, but like he's his his primary counter is the Brewmaster when we're talking about like Fart here. Like the Brewmaster is going to get so much experience, so much level progression. Team Secret need to do something to quell this, and there's more than just an ET kill. They need to get something larger, and they're looking for paparazzi up on the top lane. Ace is coming under the cover of smoke. They're rotating over, and it looks like they're searching for the for the stacks. There are no stacks. Ever since they dropped that Sentry Ward and contested the Ancients before, the only stacks they were preparing were further to the south, which Ori just farmed, no, and now has 5.5k gold. They weren't looking for the stacks. They were looking for they the were. TA. They didn't find them. Yeah, the TA was actually farming off to the right, so props to Ori to farm me in a very safe place. And the Paparazzi left and pushed bottom lane. The reason they don't expect the stacks is just because of how active the supports have been. The supports have been showing the majority of the time, so, you know, they can't be everywhere. And they've been on the map, so they can't have been stacking at the same time. Stomp's coming in, the TA trap slowed him down just enough. They can actually get that sleep off. Yapsol wants to help out, and all he can do is pick up the other Titan. But it's all a little bit too late. He'll end up stealing. The Astral Spirit. Dyer's top tower is under the attack. Puppy will fall. A T1 for a T1 tower trade off on both the top and bot lane. Top tower so Tiny is going to space creating with the Shadow Blade, which is somewhat interesting because he's their main late gamer, which means that if their mid game is poor and Tiny doesn't have any farming items, they will get obliterated. It, might, it probably won't even get the late game uh, if their mid game goes poorly. So. Let's see, who he, who can he solo kill with this? Probably... Mm, I don't even know. The Bane doesn't... I don't think he can kill uh, them. It's gonna be close. If you catch the TA without refraction up, That's maybe... Just... Lanham having a little bit of trouble, so this will work. When you've got Fata there to help out, now he has enough damage to get through the ET. Meanwhile, Puck, Dream Call on bottom, wants to jump away, Puppy. Ah, oh, Fiend's gripped up, Paparazzi will take care of him. Yep, so was moving over, hoping for a steal of his own. But doesn't find anything. But you'll take anything you can get right now. One for one trade off. Just that one for one trade off, it's uh how oh, actually the, the team fight recap doesn't even tell me how much I need to know. But it should be a little bit more in favor of Secret considering how far behind they are. Well, Ace got a 270 from killing Lana. Yeah, Paparazzi so got 185. Double damage rune on Young Eleven. He needs space. He needs to leave. He's got a trunk of Brawler. That might. No, 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 no. It won't help him. Only reflect Fraction would have saved him right there. Mm -hmm. But I think already melded very early on. Now keeping the suns going. Young Eleven knows he can just split this out. Now Fenrir in through the rear. Nightmare causing targets to switch from one to the other. Brewmaster still holding on. He's got his one charges. Triggers them now. Fortifications done for the Radiant side. Still thinking of fighting. There is no dream call to fight with for the moment. And there's your Nightmare once again. Wondering who can really defend this tower when they're caught napping. And Paparazzi's not even there. He's again on bottom lane pushing. He, I mean, he's the one farming, and you think that the Brewmaster would maybe not be so involved because he has the hand of Midas, but he already has a blink. So the advantage that you can take in between him not having the blink dagger in terms of his uh, uh, the opportunity cost is just non-existent. There was like very little they can do. And Bane's positioning that fight was also pretty good too. He's like way out in front, and he's just there so that Brewmaster can get his ulti off. He might die, but he's tanky enough that they don't have to worry too much about him. Yeah. So what does Team Secret really have that can threaten Young Eleven before he can get his split off? Like, you can you can do your avalanche toss, and the silence from Puck was what was causing him problems underneath the tower. And all three of these things hit, and you still only brought him down to 20% 20, 20 of his HP. Yeah, and you have defensive sleep, mm -hmm. if necessary, which is really, really good here. Yeah, I would, defensive I like sleep, that. there's so many abilities burning by Team Secret that he'll have yeah. one charge available. Well, they smoke up now, he's got an Invis rune on top of his blink dagger. He's also not scared because he went for damage instead of the health talent. Well, Nightmare Steel for Rubik. Very nice smoke pop. Even if he died, it's like, eh, you know. Well, it's... He may still do. Drug and Haste thrown out by Young Eleven. We've seen him want to dive downtown before in the Fiend Grip from Fenrir. They'll commit anything they've got, mainly because Paparazzi's also here this time. His last attack will be able to reach Yapsaw. Roshan being started up now by the Templar Assassin. 
Ace and Puppy are pretty nearby. Yeah, this positioning is pretty good for them. It is nighttime. They don't have vision over here. This could be the they play got, that they need. They need they vision. No jump in though. They, yeah, they need to see inside the pit. The observer knows they're watching. Here comes the pocket in through the side. Ace with the avalanche pass. Rujan killed by the rain. Who gets the Aegis? The immortal Ace. They actually get swapped out of life with Hamaranzi. Snatches the Aegis Immortal, will be the Templar Assassin. They had to try something, but the Sunder kicks in. Ace has no more life to work with. And Puppy is caught on the wrong side of the river. Maybe there could be some revenge. They pick up a throw down on the Brewmaster. He was silent, so he couldn't get the split off. Puppy did eventually die. And Ooh. the rest of Team Seeker are on the run. Yeah, sort actually has traps, which is probably one of the best steal spells that you can steal as a Rubik. Well. Oh no, don't lose traps. No, nice. yeah, such a good thing going for you, Yapsor. <laughs> he's lost traps, and he's about to lose his tier one tower up on top. This is just a beatdown. It really is. Let's have, let's have a look at that Roche moment again. This could have been so good, but there was no Aegis pickup. Perfect timing on the Avatars. You at least get the, uh, the kill. But where, like, the Aegis, it was trapped underneath Ari? Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was, so he, so was, he couldn't click it without attacking the TA? He was right on top of it. I'm sure Ace was spam clicking <laughs> to hell right on top of him. It's like, man, like, why didn't I just toss the TA away? <laughs> I could just throw him away from the Aegis. Well, that's probably one of those situations where you go into like the showcase view, so you can kind of click on it on the ground easier. Could you imagine that, like switching to showcase in the middle of such a team fight? Like, that's... Dyer are scanning. The things that you do for an Aegis. <laughs> Well, if he got it, that fight would have been very different, but for now, it's now VG Gaming with Vegas the Immortal in the hands of the Templar Assassin. They've got double blinks now on both Brew and TA. And this Terror Blade's getting fatter and fatter. Had the Dragon Lance to start with, but the Manta Style is only 500-ish gold away. And this dual threat is just way too much. And on top of that, I think VG have better late game. Because the Puck is the one that's supposed to be tr controlling the game right now, but his net worth is... I mean, it's not it's not terrible, but it's not great. He is 2-0, and zero, but I think it more worries me that his kills plus assists only add up to 2. Granted, Secret only have 4 kills, but, you know, they're supposed to be pushing the pace of the game. They're supposed to be running around, getting kills with Tiny, using Dream Call at every opportunity, but they just mm -hmm. have not been able to get anything off the ground. No, nope. they've been trying. They have definitely been trying, but it just doesn't open up for them. There's now VG Gaming. They will push down the mid. Paparazzi has his mana style and he's already queuing up the Scotty. Look at Fenrir. He's not lured in by the... <laughs> he's not lured in by the... Uh, and they got by the, the patch courier. notes. And they got the bloody courier. He went a note in Feeble build on Bane. On, uh, on ba really? And Feeble is overrated. Heavily overrated in my opinion. Even with, with the talent, I think it's not great. It depends on what you're up against. I think Tiny like hits very, very hard, so Enfeeble is less value. If you're versus like a PA or something, I think Enfeeble is extremely good. But in general, I think his other two skills are just way more useful. Fiji Gaming are trying to force this mid. Thanks to the nice removal of the waves by both Puck as well as as well as the Rubik. Because this Fable Rift Orb. It just makes it very difficult to keep them up. Most of the metamorphosis has been wasted, so they're going in and doing exactly the same thing again. Oh, oh Fenrir Fenrir cancelled it! I think he was a little bit worried it'd be stolen. Right now, it's only a refraction that was stolen. Picked up and thrown in very, very deep. Great step. Damn, he's so tanky. And the Nightmare with the splitter. They've actually got enough space created. The all flies for Fenrir. CTY goes after him and claims him. A one-for-one -one trade off. They still get the tier two tower. Top tier two tower remains barely alive for VG. Oh, he got the silent trap damage. Hmm? He got the trap damage. Nice. <laughs> this is when you start to stack him. I mean, that's a lot of damage. They're under farm too, so that thing's gonna hurt. Can can you think about like how much is it? Do you turn this into the new Techie's mind? Like, can you crunch some numbers for me? How much will it be with max traps on one position? I don't think they stack. But you can't stack them on top of each other? Oh, I don't think the damage debuff stacks. That'd be sick, dude. <laughs> I know, that's what I was thinking. I highly doubt it. I'm pretty sure they do not. <laughs> Either way, Ari, back into more ancient stack farming. He is sitting at 11,000 net worth, 12,000 for the Terra Blade. 
He actually moved off, off uh, the Scardi. He's going to go for Hurricane Pike. Brewmaster split. Ace. Yes, the Avalanche trying to create a little bit of space, but here comes Ari with his attacks. They dust over on Ace with that Shadow Blade. It won't save him a hell of a lot, but it's enough when Yamsaw can toss back the Spirits, and that will create the space, stopping Fenrir from keeping the chase going. And they'll turn around. They want these kills. The Silence onto Fenrir. Puff, Silence for, actually stunned up for the moment. Nightmare avoiding damage for Fenrir, but he can't avoid a five-man lineup of Team Secret. From all sides and angles, they bring down the Bane. Yeah, Tiny's still very, very difficult to kill. Status resistance on Dust, good luck. They have to be forcing top now. It's, this almost feels like they're fighting when like Ravage is down. In, case, in this case, it's the Brewmaster Split is down. So they can push the tier two tower on top. Yep, and no Aegis anymore. So BG don't have that threat. Puppies on defense duty on the bot lane. So that's pretty good. They want to fight despite being pretty far behind. However, Vichy did not have the Elder Titan there. There, he was uh, back healing, and TA was extremely low on mana. I don't even think she had mana for a refraction at that point, uh, after she had been done clearing that Ancient. So that's not really a fight that you want to take. You're just going to go in there and die, and perhaps chain feed. And as long as she can avoid that, then life would be great. BKB will help to avoid that. Picked up for the TA. You can kind of push out the top lane a little bit, because Team Secret are getting some breathing room. Now that VG Gaming are repairing what's on their side of the tracks, Ace is farming up bottom, which was the already heavily pushed in lane. Rapidly approaching the end of his SMY as his item of choice. And it's allowing Puck as well. He's got his BT's Blink and Veil for CTY. Trying to be everywhere, if possible. And Fada is rapidly approaching his item too, which is the Radiance. And whoop, there's the Kaya. Up for CTY. Kaya... Uh, Kaya's all right. I don't think it puts him in the range where he can instant kill the supports, though. Generally, people prefer Dagon. It's similar price point. Um, and it's also something that you can upgrade. Puck actually has an issue later in the game where you just have too much gold because he has that 420 GPM talent. So you generally want like a little bit more expensive items because you you usually already have Blink and Yules for your cheap items. But they don't have any silences in this game. It looks like he doesn't actually feel like he needs the Yules, which is a little surprising to me because that is just considered absolutely core on most pucks. He's, he's preparing himself for the rapid fire dream call is what he really wants, not the 420 talent. <laughs> <laughs> also denied, <laughs> denied the tier two tower up on top just for style points. So the net worth for the last couple of minutes has actually been slightly swinging Team Secret's way after winning one fight. So that's pretty good for them. However, I do not think they'll be able to contest the second Roshan uh, coming out from Vichy. It's yeah. going to come out very, very soon. And Mass PKB is coming out from Vichy. So I think that, you know, the charts are going to swing the Secret's way and it looks pretty hopeful. But you have to consider this next fight with the BKBs and the Aegis, or with just the BKBs, how it is going oh, to go Puppy. for them. You're in 2 deep. CTY is the name. Hood, and Puppy can really get himself out this one. And Fenrir! Oh, he's going to get the Fiend Group as well. CTY wasn't really sure if he should be involved in this. They were setting up for a gank on bottom. That's just a really dangerous place. At the same time, you don't really expect that Observer Ward to be there. Even if it were on the high ground, though, on the normal ward spot, he still would have died. But because Vichy are in a very offensive position, they can kind of farm wherever they want. You don't expect them to have wards on their side of the map. Yeah. Most of the time when you're in a position, you're like, okay, they have wards on the opposite side of the map. But, you know, Vichy are playing safe. They just want to win every single small fight that they can. They don't really need vision to win fights. Yep. In fact, that vision right now is a, is a defensive one that just, ooh, with the illusions as well, can burn through a fraction. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It doesn't burn through. <laughs> like, Ari. Blinks away, but he's definitely the aggressor out of this. But the Observer Warden Sentry, like, it, it watches the bottom, like, rotation if it does come, but it also keeps an eye on their Ancients. It keeps a, keeps an eye on the Money Bank, which is just VG Gaming's neutrals. Yeah, and it makes the supports feel safe so that they can, you know, go out and ward or solo defend towers, because that T1 is the last... Uh, is the old, is the one on the bottom... Oh, I guess they have that mid... They have yeah, the mid T1? Oh, my God. mid T1 up. That's really... Detriment. You secret. know what actually made it hilarious is like where Team Secret was getting a lot of that money to catch up in the net worth. It was by taking the top tower at the tier two, and then yeah. VG Gaming backing out of the fight. Like this. But how you how do you contest Roche at this point? Like yeah, you have the shrine, but you, shrines uh, are you YOLO it. Like you you yolo, I, you CTY YOLO it. I don't I don't even I don't think they can take the fight. 
No, there's no way they can take the fight. All they can do is just try and deny the Aegis or deny the Roshan well, kill. That's it. They're kind of poised to fight right now. The Radiance pick up on Omni Knight will be kind of nice, but still, he is very susceptible to just simply being cycling for the entire duration of the fight. And it looks like Bane is inside oh, Roshan. BKB, Ooh, what a nice BKB. timing there for Ari. He knew. The Avalanche never even able to connect. Quick Sentry was down. Just guess there's anybody in Viz there. Nice. When and CTY wants help on bottom, Paparazzi has TP down here to defend the lane. They're not really not letting like Team Secret have any of these towers. But it's a smoke gang. Four men together. And Paparazzi is walking right into it. Yep, so straight pick up, not the illusion. They toss down the tree. They know which one's the real one. And they'll flip him like a pancake. Ooh, back to back smoke. That was clutch. He probably didn't expect the back-to-back -back smoke. He saw the first one coming, or TA probably caught it on the first one, but the second one they have no idea. And now, Secret are in a pretty decent spot, and it looks like VT are around Roche, but I don't think you can take it with your TV down. Oh, not when you're gonna lose a hero already, CTY. He came over for the bounty rune. Ori, he's got himself a haste rune. This is so difficult for Puck to escape while the mid's being fought out. The Brewmaster split is there. Maybe they can make some more space. CTY is still on the run, however, through that top lane, but it's in the mid where the Brewmaster rulings, they're starting to wear off right now. They'll have to back up with the Earth ruling two seconds before it's gone. Ace has also managed to escape the fight. He has a gem on 11. That was actually a little bit scary. He didn't bother popping his BKB before the split, but I'm, I'm actually surprised they were even like in a remotely offensive position without the Terror Blade. They were pretty far ahead, but mm -hmm. things are slipping back slowly but surely and Fada's build of going super greedy with the Radiance is surely paying off because Vici have not been able to take advantage of it. Yep. And this also makes it worth repelling himself in the fights because he can actually do some damage. And the blind miss chance is going to go a long way to help saving his teammates. If you miss that first melt hit, that's such a big loss in damage. Man. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm still loving that little play that CTY had. Which one? With, with the CTY and Ari. So while that mid fight was going on, it was basically a game of cat and mouse with the Puck, as well as the Hasted Templar Assassin. That was all going down on top lane. Well, now VG Gaming, they're gonna smoke up. Five man in it. They're not going into Roshan, however. They're gonna go straight past him and wrap around the side. The circle comes out to say, let's check our own jungle. Fardus the closest, he'll break the smoke with Puppy and the jump in from Young Eleven. They'll get that silence off. It's that fresh Orc and over on Ori, denying Fada any presence in this fight. And now the nightmare continues for Puppy. But the counter push comes on top lane. CTY is attacking the tier 3 tower. Yamso will be able to get himself a little, a little bit of distance from Young Eleven. I mean, he's just a puck, though. He is just a puck. Ace is just a tiny as well. Paparazzi already with that sun that's stealing so much life. And Yamso could do little to nothing to cancel this kind of push. And they don't even care about Roshan. So the Puck added some momentum towards the top that did bring Lanham back. So he's not part of this fight right now. But at the same time, it's Secret who are men down. And they're about to be more farther. He's down for the count. Buyback does not help you in this situation. When you have none, Ruby's gone as well. Pushing into the tier 3 tower. Fortification will delay this pressure. But VG Gaming so in control of this matchup that it really doesn't matter. This is the slow walk forward. Fiend's Grip from Fenrir controlling Puppy. He'll fall as well. It seems like a hopeless case, mainly because BG Gaming currently owns what is secrets. And this is what we talk about a lot with the Omni Knight. Like, do you want to go Greaves and help out your team, or do you want to go Midas Radiance? Which would probably be better suited on a lot of different heroes. They have any silence, and you get silence, you're dead. And he just died two times in a row due to the Orchid pickup because he's just so fat. And Fada surely expects that he can get Repel off because they have very few stuns. Yeah, but... Yeah, this, just this orchid is just... It was the first reveal of it as well, like it only yeah. just blew in, so there's no way he could have prepared for that. And then we transition ourselves forward to the mid push. Well, he could prepare for it with Greaves. Greaves, you already need armor on your team, because look at their lineup. You have TA, you have Elder Titan, and you have Terribly. Like, all physical and a lot of minus armor, so you get... You, you either get Ghost Scepter or you get a lot of armor and HP to deal with it. But instead, he felt like he needed to carry the game a lot more because you have a puck in the mid lane who wasn't able to really snowball so he feels like he needs to be the secondary or even uh third damage source for their team and it 
yeah, he has the items, but really the damage output compared to any of the other cores is just going to be very minimal. Yeah. Puck's got even more defense now with the Lincoln Sphere pickup. Sad thing for Team Secret is their Observer and Sentry Ward placed down by Yapsaw was instantly scouted. So all they have to do is bring the Brewmaster over with his gem and that Observer Ward is gone. And they just, you know, they, as soon as they got the PKBs and the gem, I thought it would be very, very hard for VG to lose. They like, you know, built, uh, they built, you know, a little bit greedy at the start with the Midas first maybe, but after that, just, you know, full on team fight items yeah. to the point where Secret are going to have a very tough time holding this. Oh, they've actually got a full Bloodthorn as well. There's a third even a Bloodthorn on the Templar Assassin on top of everything else that she already has. Paparazzi, while the Aegis Moil is on TA, he's got the cheese. It's not only Sunder, but also that cheese life. Lotus Orb, fresh pickup. Fafana is all or nothing right now as VG Gaming, they come in through the top of Quick Silence for the Templar Assassin, CTY doing what he can at Young Eleven, he's in the back lines with the Templar Assassin, Yep, so gets the pick up and throw down, got an angel will buy protection and Ori really learns to remember, this is the AKC Mortal, he'll have that trigger, that the cost is too great for Team Secret to defend, and it is impossible to defend, Puffy will call it, and VG Gaming take game one of this winner's bracket semi-final. So Lotem and Eleven were certainly the MVP for me. Lotem just drew so much attention away from the TA so that the Ogre couldn't really dominate her. And then Eleven solo killing the Tiny twice and just really messed up Ace's game. Yeah, it really did. It's great to see that level of coordination coming from VG Gaming. Like, they were second place at Dota Pit. And when you're wondering what kind of coordination, what kind of performance do they bring in, to this perfect world minor and it's very up there their it's, draft was i think just 